Okay, folks, we are back. Another draft prospect video. We're going to be talking about whether or not Patrick Paul makes sense for the Los Angeles Rams. But if you are not a Rams fan, as always, if you saw my Dominic Pooney video, you could check that out after this one. Um, definitely be sure to stick around because I'm going to give you my full report. The evaluation is in. I am done scouting Patrick Paul, so I'm going to give you my thoughts on him. Before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Follow me on social media at JK Bogan at any point if you enjoy this video and you haven't already. And of course, if you want to check out more Jake content, you could do so. A link is in the description to check out the new podcast. So let's dive into it. So Patrick Paul from Houston played his full career in college at Houston as a Cougar. Uh, he is a three-year starter at Houston, will be 24 at the end of the year. So that's something worth noting. He's a little bit older, um, but he has got some serious length. He has got some serious size, great size for the position. 6'7", 315 pounds. Um, this is this is an interesting prospect. I'm going to say that. When watching Pooney, I, I actually mentioned Patrick Paul in that video, uh, Pooney out of Kansas. <clears throat> One thing that I'll point out is that he doesn't have the length that Patrick Paul has, which now we start talking about ceiling. We start talking about the long-term and what good coaching could mean for this type of player. Let's start off by saying he had his best year in 2023. Um, really has been working on cutting down the pressures given up. He did that, allowed 17 in 2022, only eight in 2023. Um, also, really important here, penalties. If you guys know me, you know how my how, what my thoughts are on penalties. I don't like you know, undisciplined play. And, you know, with Patrick Paul, he had 18 penalties the last two years, 2021 and 2022, uh, his first two years starting. But this year, only three. Three's a lot, but also not really. I'll take three all day, cutting that down from averaging nine a season as a starter. Um, when you watch the film, Paul sets his anchor well. You know, this is somebody who's really hard to move. When he, you know, anchors himself, he is ready to go. He's going to stonewall you if you try to bull rush him. I do like that a lot about him. Strong player. Although I will say he's very unorthodox looking in pass pro. Maybe it's just me. These are my notes, of course. Uh, so this is just my take and how I evaluated him. But he has an unorthodox type of approach in pass protection, looks a little wonky at times, uh, gets the job done though. His kick slide covers a lot of ground. He knows how to use it. Um, it's actually really impressive. He can recover well. Sometimes, you know, he'll get beaten off the snap, does a nice job with his kick slide. Um, he will get beat by speed rushers though. Okay. So I don't know what that looks like. If he can fix that, um, some guys can't. You know, like Rob Havenstein for the Rams, right tackle, really struggles against the speed rush, great against everything else. He's still very effective and one of the more consistent tackles in football, but he's never been able to get over the speed rushers uh, being an Achilles heel. So we'll see what ends up happening, you know, with Patrick Paul in that regard. <clears throat> he doesn't make it look pretty, but he's effective. Um, the reason I say that, he's a bigger guy, right? But he, he's not the prototypical athlete. He's not going to give you the prototypical footwork uh, that you want to see. He does, however, mirror well in pass protection. And the thing about him, he's got this, he's got these heavy hands and this destructive punch that can really just debilitate uh, you know, his, you know, his assignment, if you will. Um, one thing I'll say about him, when he gets the chance, and I watched you know, the tape that I watched with him, I watched three games. I don't see a lot of opportunities in the run game, but when he gets a chance to, you can see he can live and work his way uh, to that second level. He moves well enough uh, to do that. He's got a nasty mean streak. Love that about him because, you know, if you guys know me, my offensive lineman, I don't want him to be a ballerina only. I want him to be a destructive I want him to be a destructive ballerina. I want him to have great flexibility, you know, great footwork and be able to move around and have that, but also have that punch, have that 
mean streak, have that nastiness to send a message to the other team. And by the way, nastiness, I'm talking about while the whistle, before the whistle is blown. I, I don't want him playing through the whistle. I don't want him getting, you know, a, a penalty. But I also do like that level of play. I think it sets a tone. It is a momentum builder. So that is what you are getting uh, with somebody like Patrick Paul. Um, so that's something to keep in mind there. Another thing here, he's very aware. This is a player who's rarely going to get caught off guard. And he may lose athletically, right? He may lose because of technique. He will not lose because of a mental issue. He, he does not make mental errors on the football field. That's one thing that stands out to me that I noticed immediately. And that's something that I care about. It's something that stands out to me. It's something I look for. You know, okay, I want to see this guy pick up on different patterns throughout the game. And that's something that he does, especially watching him against Texas. You could see, okay, this guy beat me this way multiple times. He's starting to learn. He's processing the information as it's coming towards him. And so he'll pick up on, you know, pass rusher tendencies and adjust well to them. So that's what I'll say about his, I guess these are all his pros. We'll get into his weaknesses here, but a word from our sponsor, Mantis Sleep, which is our sponsor for today's video. You can get uh, your 10% off <clears throat> your Mantis Sleep purchase using promo code JKBogan. Mantis Sleep is absolutely awesome. If you haven't heard of it already, uh, first off, eye cups. Look at these things. C-shaped. What does that mean? It's not going to put pressure on your eyes if you're a side sleeper. I don't know the stats of how many side sleepers live in the world, uh, but I am certainly a hybrid sleeper that ends up waking up on his side. And so this works out well. Uh, the perfect thing about these, these are the, this is the sound mask. The sound mask essentially is going to allow you to pair your phone up to 20 hours of battery life, hundred percent blackout. You can listen to music with razor thin speakers. So definitely head on over to Mantis sleep. The link is in the description. Use promo code JK Bogan to get your 10% off. And now back to the video. So we're talking about weaknesses now with Patrick Paul because we talked about the good things. I want to know about some of the bad, right? I mean, if I if you're selling me on something, <clears throat> I need to know if I'm living in this house or this apartment, I want to know the good things, but I also need to know what are the cons here? What, what am I getting? If I'm buying your house, what does it not have? What do I need to add? This is what we're talking about with Patrick Paul. So weaknesses here. He's hesitant in the screen game. Needs to show more suddenness. I saw this immediately. Okay. They run a lot of screens. Houston does. There's a lot of passing. Um, at least in the three games that I watched, there was a ton of passing, not a lot of running the football. And when I watch him, he just doesn't get out there quick enough. Man, you are the convoy. I want to see him be more, take more ownership in that regard and it's not even necessarily ownership and it's definitely not a mental error I think he just he's slow out of the gate you know he doesn't have that quick first step that we have with Pooney sometimes he does sometimes he doesn't he's inconsistent with that I want to see him get more consistency there as well as with his footwork inconsistent with his footwork he needs to improve in that regard he wasn't asked to run block as much as the others in the draft at his position that's a weakness okay that is a weakness that's something to keep in mind he tends to leave himself open for the easy block uh to be shed okay this, this is this is important here okay because he dips his head he takes himself out of you know his positioning and he's easy for somebody to shed that block to get by in the run game and to make a play on the ball carrier so that's something to keep in mind. Doesn't have the flexibility that you want necessarily. Would like him to be a little bit more flexible. He's more of a just bowling ball type. Um, and his hand placement is very inconsistent. If he can work on these things, he's going to be really good. So before we get into the final thoughts and the overall grade, let's talk about PFF. Because a big thing about this year with my... Uh, you know, with my film review and my evaluations is I'm also using PFF grades. I'm using the stats, things like that. Things that I didn't use before, I'm trying to use them both. Why not? Let's paint the big, broader picture here. Number one graded pass protector, according to PFF. I think that checks out to an extent. If I'm being honest with you, PFF is man-made. It is not perfect. People are not perfect. So this is also subjective. However, I will say I, I would say he's probably top 10. 
very, very good pass rush, a uh, uh, pass protector, excuse me. But I think the thing that is important here is when you're talking about prospects, it's not always about what they did in college, right? That helps. It matters. The film matters. It's like, I like combining them both, but I also realize that the stats don't mean everything and the film doesn't mean it. You have to combine them both really. And what I think that I'm seeing here is Patrick Paul, his projection long-term because of that length, because of that overall size and the way he's able to move around, still a very good mover, not as flexible as what I would like, but still very good mover and everything. You talk about putting him with good coaching staff, building him up, that would help. He's tied for 51st in the run blocking game uh, in run block grade. I agree. I think that's where he is. I, I think, you know, it's really representative of what I saw. He doesn't get enough reps in the run game to really make him effective. And I think that's something that can be worked on at the next level. Some guys struggle with it. I think he has the tools. He has obviously the strength. He has the, you know, the, the punch behind his, you know, pads, if you will, his heavy hands. I think he can make things happen with good coaching. So that's just a coaching thing. Then he's ninth overall of all tackles according to pff that have played at least 50 percent of snaps keep that in mind ninth overall grade tackle that's higher than puni who was 11th i don't agree with that i think puni was the better tackle um this year this is just 2023 of course i do think he's you know you could definitely say he's a top 10 tackle in college football um you know there are going to be guys that get drafted ahead of him because they have higher ceilings they have more to their game um, but he's, you know, he's fifth in uh, pass block efficiency. He gave up four sacks in his career and 43 pressures in 1,588 pass protection snaps. I'm going to bring this up because my previous player that I just covered, Pooney out of Kansas, only started two years. The other two years was at D2. So this is a guy, three-year starter, played more reps, uh, more snaps and everything at Houston, that's a big sample size to only give up four sacks. I think that's pretty darn good. 43 pressures. He calmed down, only gave up nine this time around or, you know, eight. So, uh, look, only penalized twice or excuse me, only penalized three times this year. That's a big deal. I think when you look at the fact that he is 23 years old, going to be 24, that does matter. It factors into it. But ultimately, Paul is set up with the right coaching to be an extraordinary pass protector. I'm serious. Extraordinary. He has it all. If he gets the right coaching, Patrick Paul is going to be a behemoth in the pass protection game. However, like I said, he's going to need to improve his run blocking ability if he ever wants to reach starting level status. You can say what you will. Doesn't matter. If you have the best pass protecting uh, you know, tackle, but he's a complete liability to the point where you can't even play him in the run game. You don't have a starter. If Paul does put it all together with the athleticism and the size combination, you could be looking at a franchise tackle. And that leads us to the final grade here. I gave him a 7.7 out of 10 with agility, an 8.1 in pass protection, a 6.5 in run blocking, a 7.7 in spatial movement, a 7.6 in pull slash trap, a 9.4 in play strength, a 7.7 in technique, 9.5 in size, 8.5 in awareness, and 7.9 in balance. That comes out to an 80.6 out of 100 grade, which Dominic Pooney was 82.2. We have him at 80.6, so he's lower than Dominic Pooney, but I do think he might have a higher ceiling because of that, you know, that, that frame, the length. You know, Pooney doesn't have those long arms, so there's a lot of scouts that feel like he might be better fitted at guard or even center. I think with Patrick Paul, he's a tackle through and through, and so I have a late second round grade on Patrick Paul. He just, he comes in right in time to be that second rounder. Uh, you know, if he gets drafted in the early third, wouldn't be surprised. If he gets drafted in the early second, I wouldn't be surprised. But as far as my draft grade, I'd have him as a late second rounder. 
As far as Patrick Paul's fit for the Rams, I do think there's a fit there. However, I will let you guys know he spent way more time as a zone blocker instead of a gap scheme blocker. So that's the first thing. The Rams are moving, obviously, more towards gap. So that's not something I love there. Another thing is I don't think his ineffectiveness in the run game as a blocker is enough to I, I do think it's actually enough to not allow him to start this year. So just know if the Rams were to draft Patrick Paul, I don't know if he's a starter out of the gate. If you want to look at him as like an Alaric Jackson or somebody to maybe develop or a Joseph Noteboom where he sits behind maybe Alaric Jackson at left tackle for a year and they develop him or two years or whatever and maybe that works. Maybe he actually replaces Rob Havenstein. I think the real thing here though, is that he must improve as a run blocker. However, if the Rams grabbed him in the late second round via a trade down, I would be not against it. And if they got him in the third round, even better. I do think there are better tackles, but I also think that size, uh, you know, just the overall size factor, the 6'7", 315, the long arms, the nastiness. I, I think that there's enough there. Like I mentioned, if you can mold that, the Rams have a good offensive line, uh, you know, coaching staff. I think you could get a really, really good player and potentially your franchise left tackle. The real big thing, though, is the run game. Remember years ago, the Rams drafted Greg Robinson in the first round, and a big issue was his pass protection game that never recovered, that never got better. And the big issue, the big thing with him was that he, the selling point, he was an elite run blocker. That went away. So the hope is that he doesn't lose his pass protection ability when he gets to the NFL, and I can't imagine he will. Um, but I do think not having that run game experience, especially because they didn't run as much at Houston, I do think it limits him right now, right out of the gate. But I think if you're willing to draft a guy and have him stay for a while and make this a long-term project, I don't think he's as much of a project as you know some other players but I do think that would be a solid effort for the Rams, and I definitely think he's a name to keep an eye on moving forward. So would I draft him? Yes. Depending on the circumstances, he's on my board for sure for the Rams. I think he's definitely a fit, but we'll see what ends up happening. What are your thoughts? What do you think about Patrick Paul? Let me know in the comments section below. But I am Jake Ellenbogen. and I hope you guys enjoy this. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Follow me at JK Bogan on all social media. I'll be posting more videos like this. So definitely be sure to hit the bell icon and never miss another one. I'll see you guys soon. Later, folks. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.